Welcome to Back on the Broomstick, a modern witch's spoken word grimoire, where two witchy friends from way back are reconnecting to their pagan roots after a long period of mundanity. We're rewalking the path of the wise and trying out all the latest spells, rituals, and magical theory in today's witchcraft and pagan practices. So grab your wand and your incense, your cauldron and your crystals, and join us as we get Back back on on the Broomstick. Broomstick. Hi, and welcome to Back on the Broomstick. On this episode, we'll be talking about books of shadows, grimoires, and magical journals. I'm Layla. And I'm Shell. And I'm going to start right off with a question. What the hell's the difference between a book of shadows, a grimoire, and six other names people call it? Well, I guess it really depends on who you ask. Technically, there is a difference. A grimoire, technically is an old magical book, kind of like an encyclopedia or a textbook. It's recipes, it's rules, and it was usually handed down in families or in traditions from head of a circle to the next head of the circle. Book of Shadows was a term coined by Gerald Gardner. And I actually have a really cool little factoid about Book of Shadows and how they came to be called Book of Shadows. But we're going to get to that. What's a Book of Shadows? (laughs) To me, or by definition, honestly, to me, it's the same damn thing, okay? In my book of shadows, I'm writing down the spells and the correspondences and, and you know, tarot spreads and tea recipes, all of it. Same. And, and I guess the better way to put it is a book of shadows is a personal journal. It's your journey. You put in there whatever you want, the things that you want to learn. I have several different books of shadows, you know, one for tarot, one for magical journaling, one that's very specifically for spells and recipes. So that's like your book of shadows is a very personal magical journal. And a grimoire is usually more like an encyclopedia or a book of rules. And those are usually a little more formal. Technically, they're different, but in reality, they're They're not. not. I'm with you, Shell. Everything goes in there and how you organize it. I mean, we say do magic your own way. Your book of shadows is a magical tool. It's the exact same thing. Do it your way and the best way that works for you. Now, kind of the buzzkill to all of this is for all of you listeners out there, I've already posted a picture of my books of shadows. So you kind of see what I'm working with here. But we do want to real quick talk about there are commercial books too. You know, this can be a spiral notebook or you know, some of the cute leather bound books that that we have that I posted. But let's talk for a second about commercial books of shadows, because there is such a thing, actually. There are. And you can you can purchase a book of shadows. Shell's not just talking about the blank ones. She's talking about something like the Eclectic Witch's Book of Shadows, a companion workbook by Deborah Blake. If you don't know what to put in your Book of Shadows or if you've never created one before, something like like this. It's like a template. That's what I think of it as, is a template. Yeah, it has different sections on all the different things that you would want to put in a Book of Shadows, like crystals and, you know, your magical garden. Magical. (laughs) Crafting your own invocations. And it kind of walks you through it step by step. So that's really nice if you want somebody right there with you to kind of help you create a book of shadows. But once you do that, or if you want to skip that entirely, you're going to create your own personal journal. And I talk a lot about journal, 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 journal. Oh my God, that's all you talk about, journaling and meditation. I think it's really, really important. And it's really nice to be able to look back through your old books of shadows and see where you were as a baby witch, you know, as you were just starting out. And all the different things that you've learned and the different phases you've gone through. Now, I talk a lot about going back to my old books. And I just, I think probably the most important thing I can say as far as logistics, don't use pencil, man. You'll regret (laughs) it in 30 years. I said it before when we talked about it and I'll say it again. Pencil, it rubs and wears and I don't know, bad news for long-term effect. Yeah. My very first book of shadows, I'm not sure why I started one. It might have been something that I read in Buckland's Big Do you like to journal? I do like to journal. (laughs) So I have I have a lot of diaries and stuff from when I was a kid, but magical journaling was not something I was aware of until I think I read it in Buckland's Big Blue Book. I'm not positive where I first heard the term book of shadows, but it was just a plain black notebook that I then decorated with stickers. Same. You know, and in it, I put what I thought was important. Like I opened it with the charge of the goddess and, you know, I put spells in it, but it very quickly became a journal. I would write in it what the moon phase was, how I felt if I did a spell. And, you know, I put all sorts of things in there 
not just recipes, emotions and things that happened that day as well. I think, you know, what really works for for one person is going to be different for another, but the concept is the same. You know, I don't necessarily have a lot of today's moon phase is this, and this is how I felt about it. But I do have, this is a tarot spread I did on this date. And this was the question I asked. And these are the cards that came out. And let me tell you, they're fun to look back on. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> like little chants we came up with or little rituals we came up with. Um, You know, like I have our initiations all still written out, our coven initiations I still have all written out. Because for as much as I hate journaling, I always end up being like the coven book of shadow scribe person. Because I, I do kind of like that detail of jotting down these things to kind of reflect on or maybe utilize for a similar purpose down the road. You touched on such a good point. Jot down the date. Jot down the chant that you used. Write down the ritual structure or the spell structure. Because if it worked, you're going to want to know that. If it didn't work, you're going to want to know, know that. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to tell yourself that you'll remember the chant. You don't need to write it down. You'll remember it. <laughs> no, you, no won't. you won't. You're not going to remember it. Write that <laughs> shit down. You ain't remember nothing. <laughs> Write everything down because you will not remember it. You think you will. You'll tell yourself you will. You won't. So write it all down because it, it really is important in your magical practice, especially if you're trying to get to be a better manifester, if you're trying to get to be better with your spell work, if you're trying to get closer to deity or find balance within yourself, whatever your magical goal is, journaling that is going to help you along that path. It's going to help you be a better witch. It's a almost a necessity in divination work. I always go back to tarot, but kind of journaling your tarot journey. You know, we talked about the Wiser Tarot Journal a few weeks back that was edited by Teresa Reed. And, you know, same concept. It's just like a, a book of shadows for tarot. But, you know, I've got big chunk sections on moon magic. I got big chunk sections on dragon magic. You know, I have a whole book that I wrote out on herb magic so it is also a way for you to kind of explore things while writing them down. And then again, for me, sometimes if I'm writing down these spells or writing down these correspondences, that kind of makes me remember it better, memorize it better. Because if I write it down, I don't know, somehow I remember it better. Yes, that's another really great point. When you write it down, there's something between your brain and your hand. The act of writing it really does help you to remember it in a different way than just reading it online or type, even typing it, it's different. And my book of shadows, you know, is going to be very different from hers because a lot of times what seems to be very common with people is especially in your first couple book of shadows, it goes by your interest at that moment. Right. Mine started out, you know, with the interest in crystals and then an interest in herbs and then an interest in astrology. And so each chapter possibly of my book of shadows is going to be filled with notes. It's going to have different chakras and all the different meanings and names for those energy sources. And, you know, it's going to go through different phases and, and shells will go through different phases and chapters as well with your interests and as it should. You know, with my first, my very first book, how I actually started that off was like, that was some basic shit that I got going with that, you know. What are the quarters and what are the associations with the quarters? Um, I have written out in the first few pages of my book of shadows how to cast a circle, you know, stuff about, you know, invoking the god and goddess. So I had started my original book of shadows way back in 1990 with kind of some basic ritual stuff, basic, you know, just some basic knowledge stuff moon phases, associations uh, with numbers, things of that nature. So I kind of started with a basic witchcraft knowledge. And then my second book, like I said, I think it's pretty much divided equally into half moon magic and half dragon magic. And then it just kind of spirals out from there. But that very first one was really kind of the fundamentals of witchcraft. Mine too. And I think that Again, as you're writing, it really reinforced those lessons for you. Every young witch should be writing out those initial correspondences and those initial lessons, especially if you don't have a coven or a mentor to guide you. Yes, the information is readily available online or in a myriad of books, but there's something to be said for having it consolidated in one place in your handwriting that you wrote down. Not only are you going to remember it better, 
But, you know, a couple of years from now, when you're trying to come up with your money bowl and you're like, correspondences for money and success and luck, you can just grab your book, flip through to your correspondences section, and they're all right there. All the yeah. ones that have worked for you are right there. You don't have to go searching to six different websites or pull two different books off your shelves or head to the library or something. It's right there. Right. And same thing, like I do, I have this cross-reference system where I can cross-reference different herbs uh, based on whether they're for incense or for tea. So I have this like whole chart that I wrote out. It's charted out the way I want it and what makes sense to my crazy brain. But I've gone back to that. That's in my very first book from 30 years ago. And I go back to that on occasion, even frequently recently. I just map things out. You know, I take in that information and then I kind of map it out on paper for A, what I need it for, and B, what makes sense to my brain. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that was in the box of things that got, quote unquote, lost in the move. But my original Book of Shadows was the same thing. The binding was falling apart because I was constantly opening it. There were pages falling out because it was a reference that I would go back to regularly. Because not only was it correspondences, but I did write down spells and things that worked and I would update those correspondences with how it worked for me or new information that I got. That's another thing. Holy shit. Don't be afraid to cross things out, write in new information, paste in a new little piece of paper on there. Right. You know, your book of shadows can be organic. You know, if you want to keep a grimoire that's beautiful, like a scrapbook and you just use your best handwriting and you keep that all perfect, go for it. But your book of shadows should be alive. It should be just like a human, you know, full of flaws and love and joy and knowledge and all these things. Throw, in the throw it in your bag when you go on a trip to be jotting shit down while you're out and about. Yes, yes. You know, it, you should be spilling potions on it and there should be herbs tucked in the pages and, you know, it, it's dirty because you took it camping with you last year. Remember that time we found that big, big marijuana leaf inside one of my books of shadows? That was so great. Was that on top of my hand fasting vows? It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tarot deck. Was it the herbal tarot? The herbal tarot, the ten of cups was the marijuana cup. The ten of mar cups. Marijuana card. Yes, the happy family card. And they used marijuana leaves in that card. And I've never forgotten that. You know, maybe having that super huge fan leaf on top of my hand fasting vows for so long, that's probably pretty potent love magic herbs right there. Well, it's definitely ingrained into the two pages in that book of shadows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have four leaf clover stuck in one. I've got you know, different herbs and whatever. But in the same respect, I also have sticky notes shoved in there and like ripped right. scraps of paper from when I was somewhere and wanted, oh, I just thought of this or, you know, look at this. I need to jot this down. And that sliver of paper just got shoved in my book. I do have a book of shadows that is a school spiral notebook. It's one of those three section notebooks that has pockets. Then you got the pockets full, don't you? Oh yeah. Pockets are full. It's written in. I think it was a notebook that I had bought for my kids at one point for school that they maybe use like one page out of or something. And then when I was desperately looking for something to use as a book of shadows, I found this barely used notebook. It was perfect. And I loved being able to shove stuff into the pockets. It was really nice to have something that was kind of like a binder you know, so and I've seen people with three ring binders or, you know, they rip pages out of something and shove it into their book of shadows. It's not just a book of bound papers. It's all loose leaf or things that they kind of stick together. Spoiler alert, Layla probably had a trapper keeper when she was a younger person. I did. I really did. <laughs> I love I, it. I loved I my love trapper it. keeper. Hey, you probably did too. Actually, no, I didn't. But I was always the person who had like like a fan folder inside my backpack. You did not. Like one of those accordion folders? I like organization. <laughs> I love I like, that. I like to be discreetly. See, I like to be fashionable yet organized. That sounds like you. Perfect. <laughs> right? Right? Books of Shadows have come a long way from the time where we were just grabbing any old cool diary off the shelf. They are specifically Books of Shadows. And they look gorgeous. You know, I like the Hocus Pocus one with the eye on it. And here in Salem, you can actually buy blank books of shadows that look just like the Hocus Pocus one with the eye on it. They're rather oh. cool. I'm just saying. Book. I can't do it. <laughs> book? <laughs> so you can get a really fancy one. You can get one that's beautiful, that calls to you. I have a hard time resisting a good journal. 
I love them. They're definitely addicting once you, cause you find one and you're like, I love that. And then you're like, but wait, I love that one too. I'll get them both. I'll fill them both up. Now, if you're a crafty witch, you can get stickers and cover the top with stickers. You can decoupage them. I've seen the coolest thing with a glue gun where you take your book cover and you draw on it with hot glue from a glue gun. Mm-hmm. So you could make that eye from book from Hocus Pocus, or you can make a symbol or a sigil or something and then paint over it. And you've got a really cool looking book. Now, I know you're going to remember this because this was freaking hysterical. You know how like these places will send you free stickers in the mail? Yes. So one time I had gotten these free stickers in the mail about the same time I was getting a new book of shadows because I'd filled up other ones. I know what book you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) And they had these stickers on it that said church activity. So I covered my whole book of shadows with these stickers that said church activity. They're still on it to this day. And every time I look at the cover of that, I just get a little chuckle on the inside. Grab onto your broomstick, witches. Back after these messages. Hey, all you witches, pagans, heathens, and magical souls. Shell and I want to give a big thank you to all of our donating patrons. And we want to remind you that if you become a donating patron before April 8th, we'll be doing a drawing for a tarot reading by Shell during the solar eclipse. All you need to do is sign up to donate to the show by April 8th. Thank you so much to everyone who's donating to Back on the Broomstick. It really helps out the show. Keep it witchy. See, you can do anything with your book of shadows. (laughs) Cover it in fabric cover in church activity stickers whatever you want to do but i really am digging those leather ones that have like the i don't know what it is like carved out isn't really the word but it's like oh yeah sculpted leather yeah yeah those are yeah, really those nice those are gorgeous those are gorgeous but you know what guess what a spiral notebook from cvs works just as well yes i am definitely partial to handmade paper i really like it it makes me feel very witchy when i'm writing on it And to be honest, anything that helps you in your journaling practice, go for it. If you need the pretty book, if you want to decorate it yourself, if you want the handmade paper, you know, if you want to use it like a scrapbook or a journal, whatever is going to get you to use your book of shadows to write your magical progress, your witchy progress, your spiritual progress in it is good because I really do think it's a vital part of any witch's practice. Now... You know that I hate this more than anything for a multitude of reasons, which I will mention in a moment, but let's talk about the elephant in the room, digital books of shadows. Yes. Yes. Okay. I am a big guilty, guilty, guilty of digital books of shadows. Yes. I talk about writing in journals and I have lots of handwritten journals. I also have a huge, ginormous book of shadows that's so big, it has its own external hard drive. And I'm not a fan at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, and there's a lot of ways that you can keep them digitally. And there's a lot of advantages, in my opinion, that they have. Freaking control, alt, delete, and that shit's gone. What's the advantage to that? Like, what if there's an accident? What if your laptop gets crushed by elephants? What if Google goes down and you've lost your Google Drive? Like, there's just so many factors. A book, I can hold, I can caress it, I can love it and rub it and make sure it's safe. I can't do that with a digital book. Okay, my hard drive of shadows is beautiful and I love it. And I have it in triplicate because we all know that three is a very (laughs) sacred magical number, right? So it lives on my laptop, it lives on my external hard drive, and it also lives in Google Drive. So I have it in three different places. The reason I do- That's a lot of freaking work, man. No, actually, it just saves there. It's not a lot of work. It's not. And the reason I do that is because back in the day when we had Circle Amara and I was the keeper of the online website and the online Book of Shadows- I had a ton of information and we were constantly putting it up on that website. I was continuously putting things up there and then it disappeared. I was going to say, remember the time you lost it for 15 years? Yes, I have it back. It took a while, but I have it back. (laughs) So you're not entirely wrong. My children grew up and graduated high school and college by the time she got it back. It's true. That's true. (laughs) But I did get it. And now everything is in triplicate. But the advantage of having it online is the sheer amount of data that you can have. Sometimes I just don't fucking feel like writing it out. 
and you can add pictures like sometimes I'm like man I wish I could just take that picture and add it to my book of shadows as reference so you got me on that I'll give you that and and, and I do love in a book of shadows where you print things out and stick it in there that's nice too but it is super easy in a digital book of shadows to, to put all your pictures there take a picture of the spell keep it with the spell list keep it with the ritual you can search it when you ask me to find something, I'm like, yeah, give me like two days and I'll get back to you. <laughs> right. And because I've written them, because you've written them, you probably have a good general idea of where it is. But digitally, I can call that up in a heartbeat, as well as several other articles or interesting things that have similar keywords. Whereas I can sometimes be like, well, I know what book that might be written in. <laughs> but it does lack some of the the personalization of handwriting. And for me, I remember it better if I write it out by hand. Right. So, you know, there's nothing wrong. Shell has some very valid points. You don't want to lose your book of shadows. You know, it there's some negatives to having like it. I'm devastated. Yeah. I feel like I like lost a half of my brain. Yep. <laughs> so keeping it digitally is one way to do it. Some people use different notes apps. One note, you could do it on Google Drive. You can do it on your phone. Whatever works whatever works for you. So you can do it with a pre-made book. You can do it with a, a book you make or a book you buy. You can do it digitally. Another thing that I like to do, and some people are going to think this is blasphemy. Throw it at me. Write in your books. <gasps> Isn't that what you get them for? Well, no, I meant like write in your books by authors. Oh my God, why would you do that? What's wrong with you? No, you should. I think you should take that copy that you have. I wish people could see my face right now. <laughs> now, I'm not saying every single one. You know, if you got a first edition of Drawing Down the Moon or something, you're probably not going to want to write in that. However, you know, if you've got a copy of Matt Aron's Psychic Witch or whatever, write in the margins, especially if there's a spell or if there's a, a meditation or a lesson that you're doing, highlight that shit. Right in the margins. Use those as a book of shadows as well. I have books that are 30, 35 years old that I didn't even let the bindings get bent in and they look like they're in mint brand new condition and you're talking about writing in them? I know. I am an absolute book fiend. I love books. I you search are. them out. You're the kid who has mustard stains on the pages. That's you. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say that they're well loved and they're used. And I do think that you should be able to take them with you, use them just like your book of shadows, you know, write in them. Obviously, if you have a classic and, you know, it's expensive, then don't write in it. But everything else, write in it. You know, make sure that you write your notes. You need to write how it worked for you. You're nuts. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have recently come across an interesting, and this is not something I've tried, but an interesting other way that folks are keeping books of shadows, and that is voice recordings, almost like an audio diary or an odd, not a diary, but like an audio journal of sorts. Don't we call this podcast a uh, spoken word grimoire? <laughs> right. All I could think of is that, you know, sitting there talking in your phone, but that's not a bad idea. The problem is, is you got to make sure you listen back to that shit. Just like yeah. you write all this down, you got to go back and reference back to it. Or play it for something that has a transcription option. I believe that um, you open up a Google uh, Google Doc. Gives you the option to transcribe. Yeah, so then you can just play it and have it transcribed there. That might work, but I think that's a good idea. Oh, actually, that's a cool idea. One of my biggest problems with a Book of Shadows, with any journal typically. What? putting the first thing in it. Oh my God, I stress about that. That gives me anxiety. After <laughs> done with page one, after page one, I don't give a shit what happens after that. But that first page that like you it's open a killer. the cover and then what? Because they're so perfect. You know, an unwritten in Book of Shadows is beautiful. It's pristine. It's perfect. Everything is wonderful. I'm so afraid I'm going to ruin it if I don't do it just right. I either start it with a poem, um, I did my initiation spell is one of them for one of my books. You know, something kind of meaningful that I don't want to say sets the tone, but kind of sets the tone for that book. Because every book has a different tone. So whatever's going to set the tone for that book, like the one I, I've talked about a couple of times now that's like half moon magic and half dragon magic. I have this like beautiful poem written in there about like dragons 
you know, flying through the moon and stuff like, so it's kind of, it sets the tone for my magical writings that are in that particular book. Yep. I've kind of fallen into that same thing as well. My very first book of shadows had the charge of the goddess as the first page and all the rest of them tend to have a quote, like you said, to kind of set the tone. Yeah. You know, usually I'll find some type of quote or something like that, that sets it that way. Or sometimes I'll just free form, write. I have a couple journals where the first page, I just kind of get into a meditative state, you know, use candles if you like, incense if you like, but just kind of get into a nice, calm, balanced, meditative state with your pen and that paper and then just start writing and then just let it flow. And I have two or three journals that I started that way. That's hard for me because the anxiety is high. So if I'm able to calm myself down and do that, it works. Otherwise, I go with tried and true. I usually, like you said, a poem or a quote. It is so stressful on how to like open a book. Yeah. How, do you open, how do you open this next chapter of your magical journey? That's some stress. I've skipped the first page before just to be able <laughs> <laughs> and promised myself I'll go back and put something wicked cool there. And I think at, and at least I can show you right now. I'm pretty sure this one I have nothing in the first page. That's funny. That's funny. Because I've I was afraid. A- I've done symbols and sigils as a first page, though, before, too. You know, symbols that meant something to me and put some sigils in there that had meaning to me of, again, setting the tone for that book. So I've done it that way, too, where I've just kind of drawn out some, you know, some runes, different symbols, things of that nature. So really, whatever floats your boat. Now, this question has been asked by a couple different listeners But have we ever consecrated or blessed a book of shadows? And if so, how do you do that? Is that important? And how do you do it? I got a good way to bless someone with your book of shadows. (laughs) (laughs) Does it involve throwing it at their forehead? Kind of a little bit, maybe. (laughs) You know, I've kind of done maybe, I guess when I first get it, I kind of do this. Here we are. You are my new book. I am your new writer. What are we mapping out? But like, I don't do it like every time I open it. I don't know if I consecrate it per se, but I'd say I maybe have a a, a conversation with it. Yeah, I definitely did my first one. I think as I was creating my first one and putting my magical name and stickers along the spine and putting everything on there, I did bless it with oil. I had some type of blessing oil. I had it in sacred space, in circle, something very simple. Yeah, I've never done that. Yeah, I think the very first time, hey, I was extra. I was a teen, man. What do you want? There were candles. You can sometimes there still be incense. Extra. What are you talking about? I like to be a little extra sometimes. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think whatever works for you, because you know, you you went kind of a little extra, and mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily. But I don't think that that makes yours or mine any greater or lesser. Nope. It's just whatever works for you. Yeah, I think I only ever did it with the first one, and then after that, I think just the act of choosing it. And then, like you said, kind of sitting with it that first time and flipping through it and just being like, ah, this is my fresh new journal and just feeling it in my hands and just kind of getting comfortable with it, getting to know it. And I guess that kind of goes back to the anxiety of that first page, because it's like you are officially setting in stone the relationship you and this, you know, the the journey that you and this book are going to go on. Yeah. And that's, that's what's, that's what's up with first page anxiety. (laughs) (laughs) It it feels weighty, but It it, it does get better. Once you're able to put something down on that page or skip it entirely, usually you're able to just go right ahead. And I don't have the world's best handwriting and I can't draw for shit. However, I will draw things in my book of shadows. I give that up. I set that ego at the door. And when I'm in my book of shadows, I know this is for me. It's highly personal. So whatever I want to put in there, if I want to draw some weird little spiral, I'll draw it. (laughs) And I'll even go back sometimes with colored pencils or colored pens and add in details and things like that. But I try not to worry about whether my handwriting is perfect or if I have to cross something out or not. Say no published works here, folks. (laughs) You're not sending this off to an editor by any stretch. You know, even if you've got horrible handwriting, still do it. Right. You know, the the goddess is not going to be looking over my shoulder onto my book of shadows and being like, oh, honey, your handwriting does not cut it. You're just out. You know, that's that's not going to happen. It's just yours. If you can share it if you want. But book of shadows, typically very personal. Right. If you're involved in a coven, particularly if it's a Wiccan coven, there might be a coven book of shadows or a coven grimoire. 
that your high priest or high priestess will have. Um, and that will sometimes get, like if a daughter coven hives off, they will take a copy of that grimoire or book of shadows. And that's usually something, like we said earlier, that is a little more formal. It's a little more like a textbook that'll have more like rules of the coven guidelines. This is the way the coven calls a circle. This is how a coven does these spells. Lay out the traditions. Right. So that'll be a little more formal. And if you're lucky enough to get a book of shadows or a grimoire handed down to you, those are very cool. Not very common, but very, very cool. You know, kind of going back to an old episode um, where we, we talked to the author, Jamie Della, about a book called A Box of Magic. That's actually what happened to her. Her her friend slash mentor passed away. And after a good long chunk of time, like a little more than a decade, if I'm not mistaken, she just gets this box at her door full of her mentor's old books of shadows. That to me would have been gold, man. Oh, gold. yeah. Gold. You know, if you've got your granny's old recipe box that's got you know, that's got your cough syrup in it, or it's got something for, you know, aches and pains or whatever in it. That's just as good. I think all those old recipes. Absolutely. And I do actually have like, you know how I'm sure your grandma did the same thing and your mother, the index cards. With the oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually have a wooden box full of index cards that were both of my grandmothers. Um, I have some of my great grandmothers, some of my mothers. And that's almost like I look at that as almost like a kitchen witch book of shadows. You know, like yeah. I have the books of shadow. I have that one book of shadows that's split between moon magic and dragon magic. That box is like kitchen magic. I love that. That's gold right there. That's beautiful. You know, to have something like that handed down, that's fantastic. And I'm lucky enough that a lot of those recipes are actually written in my grandmother's uh, and my mother's handwriting. And, and so that kind of makes it extra special. Hopefully not in pencil, right? Not in pencil. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I said at the beginning of the episode that I had a a kind of fun fact about Book of Shadows. Okay. Tell me, tell me. (laughs) All right. So the term Book of Shadows, people are pretty sure was a creation of Gerald Gardner. Now, Gerald Gardner, back in 1949, published a book called High Magic's Aid, and it was about witchcraft in the medieval era. In that book, he does not mention anywhere the word Book of Shadows. So Dorian Valiente tells a story about when this book was published. In 1949, there was an advertisement for High Magic's Aid that came out in a magazine called The Occult Observer. And in The Occult Observer, so there's one page that has Gerald Gardner's book, High Magic's Aid, advertised. Directly on the opposite page was an advertisement for something by an author named Mir Bashir. And he was talking about a Sanskrit divination method that involved measuring people's shadows. And it was called the Book of Shadows. And Valiente says that Gardner thought that that was such a cool term that he adopted the term Book of Shadows for a witch's personal magical journal. You know, that sounds like something he would do. Right? (laughs) So after that, after his book came out, so roughly 1949, Gardner came up with the term Book of Shadows. And again, it was mostly because of an advertisement that was opposite his book in The Occult Observer. So there you go. No shit. That was like 75 years ago. Wow. Right? So that's where the term Book of Shadows came from, 1949-ish, by Gerald Gardner. So are you telling me then that the word and the term grimoire predate that? Oh, yes, Absolutely. I'm not big on word origins. I'm sorry, but I, I'm just curious. Is this something? Is was grimoire kind of the, for lack of a better phrase, the ancient name for it? Yes, grimoire is a French word, kind of related to the word grammar, and it used to refer to any book that was uh, any book that was written or any book that was written in Latin. Okay, I gotcha. And then it started to become associated, you know, Latin, like the magical language magicians write in Latin, and right. So grimoire or grammar started to become associated with books of magic. So okay. yeah, that came in like the 19th century, I think. So it, it's a couple hundred years old. Nice. Okay. Okay. So grimoire just, came first. Yep. Book of Shadows came next. And honestly, people pretty much use them interchangeably. Right and now. journaling came in between. That's right. Journaling <laughs> is important all around. Magical journaling, mundane journaling, journal everything. That's what I say. 
So that's pretty much it. I think we've covered the topic of books of shadows, grimoires, magical journals from cover to cover. Nice. Nice pun. What I did there. there. Yeah, you like I, that? Yeah, I like the <laughs> pun. I like the pun. Cover to cover. <laughs> well, I was bound by your comments. Ooh, it's very good. I like that. <laughs> stop us now. Please. I know this is just going to get worse. <laughs> so thank you all for listening to Back on the Broomstick. Take a look at our website, backonthebroomstick.com. Check out our YouTube channel at Back on the Broomstick. Instagram and Facebook. Guess what? Back on the Broomstick. You also still have a few days if you would like to join our lovely donating patrons at the bottom of the show notes. You can find a support the show link. And thank you to everyone who is currently supporting us. We couldn't do this. And don't forget, if you become a donator by the eclipse, then we are going to do a drawing and we are going to pick one lucky donator and I will give you a tarot reading. Tarot reading by Shell. If you are one of our amazing donating patrons, check out the link in the show notes. Again, thank you all so very much. And we will see you next week. Until then... Stay wise, stay wicked, and keep it witchy. 